In the opening prayer, the collect of the Mass today, we prayed that God may give us the resolve to run forth to meet Christ. Now, since we've already started what the world calls the holiday season, the first image that comes to mind as I hear those prayers is that of a child who bolts out of bed first thing on Christmas morning, and what does he do? He runs to see what presents are waiting brought by Santa or the Christ child. You know, there's something spontaneous about how our little ones literally run to receive gifts that are, as ultimately all gifts, the gifts of God. But somewhere along the line, as we get older, then so many of us, we kind of lose some of that joy and excitement of Christmas. And by the end of December 25th, We're often tired and bored of it all and ready to get back to normal. But the church proposes to her children a different way. Remember last year, you know, during the Advent season, you know, I proclaimed myself the Advent Grinch, okay? And we talked a lot about how not to surrender to the spirit of the world in this season. The church wants us to have joy and excitement, to run towards Jesus and receive Him with love. But we don't really do that if we surrender ourselves to what is essentially a pagan conception of the holiday season. Today we start that penitential season of joyful expectation called Advent. And what we look forward to, as we heard in the gospel just now, is not a little baby in a manger at the end of this month, but that little baby grown into the judge of the living and the dead that we will meet at the end of the world. Now we know this, at least in part, and so it's easy for us to look at how we betrayed the innocence of childhood, the beauty of holiness. And then we lose ourselves in nostalgia for a past in Bethlehem and then ignore our future at the feet of Christ when there will be a new heaven and a new earth. So how do we get all of that beauty of childhood, the purity of grace, how do we get that back? Why does it seem so often that we don't have the resolve to run forth to meet Christ? whether he invites us to come to adore him in the manger or to account for our lives at the final judgment. I want to ask you a question this morning. Have you ever or are you now experiencing any of the following? Weariness, melancholy, feeling overworked, discouragement, instability, activism, boredom, or depression. The early fathers of the church talked about this phenomenon quite a bit. They looked for a word to describe it. The ancient Greeks said that when someone was so dehumanized that they couldn't even bury their dead loved ones, that they possessed a lack of care, akedia. Evagrius of Pontus, one of the desert fathers of the 4th century, borrowed the word to describe a state of soul when our spiritual life has been dehumanized and dechristianized. Remember that for the early Christians, they thought of the Christian life in terms of the exodus. We leave the Egyptian slavery of sin by crossing the Red Sea by baptism and begin a spiritual journey our whole life, wandering through a desert, which ends up in the promised land of heaven. And the early fathers of the church were so aware that sometimes we get tired of wandering around in the desert, and we get lost, and we don't know where to go, and we even aren't sure if we're going to get to the promised land of heaven. 
So the fathers used that word, which in English we call acedia. Acedia is that enduring complication of life that just exhausts us. Interestingly enough, it's a phenomenon which any of us can recognize, but which, strangely enough, spiritual writers for centuries are becoming less and less attuned to. In 1996, Christoph Cardinal Schönborn, the Archbishop of Vienna, preached a retreat at the Vatican and noted that acedia is the most forgotten topic of modern morality and spiritual theology. And it's also the root cause of the greatest crisis in the church today. So many of our people are just tired of wandering in the desert. They're distracted and indifferent from the things of God. Now, Evagrius writes that there are five principal manifestations of acedia, which is a word that can't really adequately be translated by any similar word in English. The first is interior instability. You know when you just feel that you've got to move around and distract yourself constantly? Okay? You get bored so easily. Okay? I realized that I had this when every time I was at a stoplight, I had to check my email. Okay? Why? What was I thinking? Okay? I'm sure some of you have had that kind of interior instability as well. Second, an exaggerated concern about our own health. Okay? The body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and we must respect it, but sometimes you know, we either obsess over body image okay, or gorge ourselves in gluttony. It's one extreme or the other. Third manifestation of acedia, we have an aversion to manual work. You know when you see the laundry pile just get higher and higher and higher and you're like, I am not going to do that. I just don't care. I, yes, I know that there are dust bunnies the size of small children all over the house. I just don't care. Fourth, minimalism in our spiritual life and the duties of our state in life. Trying to get by with as little as possible or maximalism and lacking discernment and doing them well. You know, we become the martyr. I do entirely too much. I do everything around here and no one loves me. No one respects me for everything I do for them. That's a manifestation of acedia. And finally, general discouragement. We want to leave the arena of our spiritual battle. We want to abandon our vocation whether it be to work, to marriage, to religious life, and we just want to give up. If you look at your life right now on this first Sunday of Advent and you're seeing any of those things, then chances are acedia is creeping into your spiritual life. So why are we talking about this now? Doesn't this all sound more like a series of sermons for Lent rather than Advent? Well, not exactly. Advent is when we prepare for our final encounter with the Lord, the same Word that takes on flesh in the Incarnation. It is the beginning of a new liturgical year in which we commemorate under ritual form all of the mysteries of salvation history. My friends, it's time for us to begin again. And thank God that He gives us this opportunity to begin again. And if we are afflicted by acedia, which is not something that you're going to find in self-help books in the psychology section of Barnes & Noble, we have to know what it is. And most importantly, how to overcome it. I've mentioned for your spiritual reading this Advent, a book by the current abbot of saint wandrille in France, The Noonday Devil, Acedia, the Unnamed Evil of Our Times. It'll also form the core of our preaching this Advent. This Sunday, we've been talking a little bit about what Acedia is. Next Sunday, we're going to talk about the remedies for it. 
on Gaudete Sunday on how Christ is the solution for it. And on the last Sunday of Advent, how to be spiritually fruitful so that when Christmas comes, we can be renewed in spirit and be able to celebrate the feast with joy. But for now, back to Acedia. St. Thomas Aquinas says that there are two parts to Acedia. One, sadness about spiritual good. He writes that man can be sad in, even in the presence of God because for his sake we must renounce carnal, temporal, limited, and apparent goods that are immediately attainable for the ultimate good that is attainable only by the free gift of God in heaven. Two, a sluggishness which prevents us from bringing acts to their fulfillment. We're paralyzed in doing good works. Charity dies in us. And we become indifferent to love. We become indifferent to our neighbor. St. Thomas goes on that acedia produces all kinds of effects in us. We try to flee whatever saddens us. We seek out things to compensate. We lack courage. We find that we just seem to be irritated with people all the time. We get angry. We struggle against spiritual good itself. I don't want to go to Mass this Sunday, I'm tired of praying. We seek out unlawful things. And we can finally, if it's not checked, end up in despair. Acedia is something that affects our relationships, not only with God, as we've talked about, but with others as well. And it is particularly common and destructive in married couples. We know that Marriage as a sacrament is hateful to the devil, and he's going to try to do everything that he can to destroy your marriage. And he's not always going to do it by the ways that are the most obvious. A lot of times it is precisely by that temptation to acedia. How does it manifest itself there? Well, first of all, it's easy for us to experience hatred of the joy of marriage. We want to leave it. Had I not married you, my life would have been a lot happier. You were the obstacle to my happiness, my self-fulfillment, my joy. But St. John Paul II reminds us that the only place in this world where self-giving in its whole truth is possible is marriage. That's where true self-giving is to be had. Every day of a marriage has to be a return to the first day if it is not to succumb to acedia. If not, what happens? You've seen this, hopefully not in your life, but perhaps in other people. Spouses begin to withdraw from each other. They begin to withdraw into themselves. They lose their openness to children They become closed to life. And then the unity between them suffers. The monks of old, when they got this phenomenon of acedia, they wanted to flee their cells. Married couples today, when they suffer through this, they seek out compensations outside of the home. They keep themselves busy with anything and anyone they can outside of the family. And then they start looking for novelty. Someone else to fulfill them. Somewhere else to be. Apart from the partner that God gave them. Divorce and adultery are not sins that just kind of happen. Their way is prepared for when our hearts give in to the noonday demon of acedia. And it can happen to any of us. And can happen to the best of us. On this first Sunday of Advent, God is giving us a chance to begin again, to take advantage of the acceptable time of salvation because it is at hand. 
So this Sunday, let us ask ourselves the hard question whether those phenomena that we talked about associated with acedia, whether those things register in our hearts. Because there is hope and there is joy to be had. During this first week of Advent, let us come to the Lord and ask Him for the grace to start a new life in Christ as we start a new liturgical year. Let Advent be a time not of losing ourselves in the busyness of a holiday season, but of losing ourselves in an ocean of mercy, of losing ourselves in the joys of heaven. 